Hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Kirikova. I am director for international projects for the Manesh Central Exhibition Hall in St. Petersburg, Russia. And it is my distinct pleasure to welcome you all um, to the discussion, uh, to our online conversation today. Uh, we are going to talk with the creators of the first Helsinki Biennial that is currently underway in the Finnish capital. Uh, and well, before I do the introduction of our speakers today, I would like to remind our Russian audiences that you have to choose the, um, the Russian channel if you would like to listen to the panel in Russian. Um, so I'm just going to say it uh, in Russian now. Дорогие друзья, для наших русскоговорящих слушателей, если вам удобнее слушать эту панель по-русски, пожалуйста, выберите внизу экрана справа русский язык. Там, где значок земного шара, тогда вам будет доступен, доступен этот разговор на русском языке. Большое спасибо. Um, so, coming back to English. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank our dear partner and actually the co-organizer of this uh, event, um, the Finnish Institute in St. Petersburg and its director, Sani Kontula-Web. Uh, Sani is here with us today. Good evening, Sani. Uh, good evening, dear Anna. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope that uh, some of our audience today has already heard about the Finnish Institute, uh, as our main aim is to represent and promote Finnish culture in Russia and support cooperation between our countries. And we're very happy for tonight's event and uh, grateful to Manej and especially to Anna Kirikova for her initiative to invite Helsinki Biennial to discuss the brand new art event in Finland. And of course, we are equally happy that Helsinki Biennial's director and head curators responded to this invitation. Um, as there are still limits to traveling, this kind of dialogue is absolutely vital in order to stay in touch uh, exchange ideas and be inspired. So I would also like to warmly welcome everyone who joined us today and wish you all an interesting evening. Thank you, Sunny. Um, on behalf of the manager, I would just like to say that we appreciate a lot our cooperation and our friendship and um, the institutes that you're leading, uh, the institute's interest in, in, in cooperating, collaborating with us and promoting cultural exchange and universal cultural values. Thank you, Sunny. Uh, so coming back to um, our main topic today, the Helsinki Biennial currently underway in Helsinki. Um, the Helsinki Biennial is entitled The Same Sea and it presents 41 artists or art collectives from Finland and across the globe. And very interestingly, the main space for this exhibition is uh, the former military island of uh, Palasari that is located in the, in the open sea in the Helsinki archipelago. Uh, and also, interestingly, the island is, um, is a natural reserve, so there is a lot of um, interesting discussion about the topic and how actually you do um, an exhibition of this kind and scale on, on within, within a natural reserve. Uh, so let me uh, introduce our speakers today. Uh, so first of all, the director of Helsinki Biennial, uh, Maya Tanini Mantilla who has um, a long and diverse background in visual arts, uh, museum management and audience engagement. And just my, just a few words about you. Uh, Maya has um, led a variety of um, cultural institutions. Uh, I guess, you know, uh, most of them, such as the Tenium Art Museum, the Finnish National Gallery and the Helsinki Kunsthalle. Currently, Maya is also the director of the Helsinki Art Museum, which is one of the largest museums in the Nordic regions, uh, in the Nordic region, and um, uh, uh, in, in addition to an extensive exhibition program and collecting, uh, Helsinki Art Museum is also responsible for public arts in Helsinki. Uh, 
Um, the latest addition to Helsinki Art Museum's program is the Helsinki Biennial, which takes place on the island of um, Valeasai. So good evening, Maya. Good evening, Anna, and thank you so much for this invitation to participate and opportunity to tell you more about the biennial. Thank you. Uh, and also, I'm delighted uh, to introduce the two hat curators of the first edition of the Helsinki Biennial. Uh, so tonight with us, we have Pirko Sitari, who is the head of exhibitions at um, Helsinki Art Museum. Uh, and also, as I just said, I had one of the two head curators of the Helsinki Biennial. Good evening, Pirko. Good evening. Nice to be here. Thank you. And also we have uh, Taro Tatpola, who since 2017 has been leading uh, public art commissions at Helsinki at the Helsinki Art Museums. So her team actually commissions public artworks for uh, the city of Helsinki. Uh, good evening, Taro. Hello. Nice to be here. Uh, so I'm very excited for our conversation today and um, uh, with the opportunity to talk with you about your work on the creation of the first Helsinki Biennial. And just to note to our audiences, uh, if you have any questions or any comments, please do send them directly into the chat box uh, on Zoom which is located um, uh, uh, on, on the uh, left-hand side, uh, on the bottom of Zoom. And we will make sure to leave some time for the uh, discussion, uh, to leave some time for the Q&A after, after the discussion. Uh, so let's start our conversation. And my first question would be about actually uh, the starting point of the Helsinki Biennial. Uh, we actually know that currently in the world there are over 300 registered biennials, uh, so the world is kind of dominated by this uh, by this exhibition format. So my question to Maya Tanini Matila, Maya, um, what was actually the starting point or the impetus for the uh, uh, for the biennial? Um, where does it come from, and why exactly here in in Helsinki? Well, and as you described, the Helsinki Biennial is a contemporary art event on an island just uh, off the shore of Helsinki. We have 328 islands in the archipelago of the city. And uh, if this, this is a fantastic area, looking at it from a wildlife point of view, from a historical uh, venue point of view, these are, are, are fantastic places. And uh, the Helsinki Biennial is a city initiative. Helsinki uh, 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 stated in its uh, city strategy, in 2017 that the uh, contemporary arts biennial would be uh, held in the archipelago and this supports the uh, city's maritime strategy also because there is a strong uh, need to open up these islands uh, which have been in military use for for decades uh, for centuries, some of them, and uh, for and to give the the locals, the people living in Helsinki, and also travelers from abroad, an opportunity to use these islands for recreational purposes and and uh, just to enjoy in, enjoy them. And um, the island that the Vallisari, uh, the island of Vallisari, where the biannual is located, is a very special island. And Tarwan Pirko will tell you so much more about about how the uh, artists have interacted with with the island. Uh, but it was really shut off for, uh, from visitors until 2016, when it was uh, opened. But uh, visitors have not really found their way to the island, and now, now via the biennial, uh, it's been a, a, a real surprise and a wonderful experience for, for the people that have visited. And as uh, Helsinki's own art museum, Ham is responsible uh, for the production and curating of the biennial. Um. Right. So, uh, Mai, you, you, uh, as 
you, you were talking just now uh, about this island as a natural reserve that is full of wildlife. Uh, and also, I suppose uh, it does have um, uh, some historical heritage on it. Uh, so from the point of view of exhibition making of, you know, this scale, of this, uh, of this large scale, how did it actually happen if um, one of the curators could um, could help us with it? How, how do you work on, on, on such areas? Maybe I can start. Uh, um, when you are working in such a specific and unique location like Vallisari, it uh, really requires a site sensitive approach, I would say. So mm -hmm. we invited artists to create new site specific work, or then we selected existing artworks that we thought that they are um, having new meanings in this, uh, this context. So when we work with this sensitive way, we really uh, try to uh, create a real dialogue between artworks and the island. And um, every artwork was also evaluated by, by professionals like nature conservators, for example. So it was a, a long process and uh, every artwork was really carefully thought about that it's, uh, it's uh, done in respect of nature and cultural heritage in uh, which we have in the island. Yes, and if so I you're make... talking... yeah, sorry, sorry, yeah, please, please. <laughs> um, I don't have much to add what, to what Pirko already said, but uh, Valisari was in a way a perfect island for this kind of dialogue and also bringing an art event because it has an existing uh, infrastructure. It's not uh, totally uh, taken over by nature. Uh, it has this, as you can see from this map I'm sharing, um, it has a, a, a historical uh, road that, were, that was used to bring cannons to various points of the island. So, and, and it has toilets, it's, it's been, it has services, and it's very convenient trip away from the mainland, only 20 minutes by boat. So there were many, many good points in doing this kind of event on that island. And 75% of the, of, the, of the island is still uh, a nature conservation area, so and, and closed from the public. Uh, so when talking about uh, working closely with nature conservators and um, scientists of, of, of wildlife and uh, whatsoever, uh, because what we read in the description of the biennial and its press announcement was that it is a real eco-friendly uh, exhibition. So if you could just give us um, a little bit more detail on how actually that was happening. Uh, I mean, in, in reality, because, you know, we read this, you know, this eco-friendly, whatever, it's like, um, um, it's like, you know, uh, just a name attached to something. So if you could tell us mm -hmm. um, in a few more detail how you were approaching this with an eco-friendly approach in reality. Maybe I can start off by talking about uh, the process and exhibition right. making in general, and then uh, Taro and, and Birko can continue with the with the content of, of the uh, biennial. Um, Helsinki is con committed to sustainability, and as a Helsinki biennial, of course, that was a starting point for the way we wanted to work on the island. And this was also something that was brought up very strongly by artists when this biennial idea was announced, that uh, there was a demand for us to to uh, really take sustainability and uh, ecological aspects uh, seriously. And uh, I must say it's been really a big learning curve, big learning process. Uh, we've not done everything right. We're, we're still, we've still, still got a long way to go. But uh, we've been forced to think about these issues uh, on a very concrete level. Uh, we've used an eco-compass tool to monitor our actions on the island. Uh, we've uh, had the first 
car uh, carbon footprint calculator, which has been developed for a non-governmental organization. So we are we have been counting our carbon footprint. Um, the fact that we wanted to organize the uh, biannual for a longer period was one uh, sustainability point of view. And um, making the uh, biannual digitally available uh, on our website and not printing so much material was something very concrete we did. Um, we've had an eco-coordinator working with us uh, throughout the uh, process and uh, thanks to her we've really been able to uh, uh, do concrete concrete uh, things. Uh, during uh, this uh, pandemic of course we used a lot of Skype and Zoom to uh, uh, communicate with partners and, and the artists and, and uh, we've been trying to minimize transportation uh, cutting waste for uh, uh, building materials. There are many, many different ways, and although they might sound uh, small, but together I think their effect is is uh, uh, can be quite profound and is is something we're developing all the time. We want to also uh, develop the service path that people. Uh, use in the, on the uh, island uh, as something that could be used as an example for other islands in the future, like how waste and uh, is, uh, is, uh, uh, is, is collected and, and uh, taken away from the island, how, how people uh, use the island, how the services, what kind of food is served on the island, uh, all these these small um, details, they all uh, build up to something something larger. But maybe Tarwa and Spirko can continue from this. Yeah, I would just I would just like to remark that it certainly sounds impressive because you know with small steps, it is the small steps that that make um, that make the world you know move further. And it yeah. certainly sounds like it might be a great case study for all of us who are involved in. Um, uh, in, the, in, 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 uh, in the exhibition making processes. Yeah, that's true what Amaya told that we have uh, plenty of things that we have learned to do differently. Uh, there are so many things that we need to learn, but there are also things that we need to unlearn. <laughs> so we have to leave yes. out some things that we did. But uh, ecology or eco ecological way of making exhibitions is uh, of course, First of all, matter of production and how we do the things. But it's also a matter of the content. And uh, when it comes to the content, um, it's good to mention maybe here that uh, we invited to um, Biennial BIOS, an independent research unit, which does multidisciplinary environmental research to have the, and they have the research station on the island. Um, and they can organize their talks and lectures and also to present this uh, dashboard for, which is for transition politics as a tool for monitoring and uh, guiding ecological reconstruction in Finland. So that is a one, one interesting uh, ex example of how we include it into our program, um, their work. Right. Yes, uh, um, and also uh, I think from the beginning it was clear that we wanted this biennial to work to reflect two levels, to, to like um, the global level and the local. And with the global, one of the, the our, <laughs> how to say, um, the the most uh, the biggest global threat, of course, is this ecological crisis and, and the loss of biodiversity, which we found that we could not make an exhibition of in this scale without thinking through that. So, uh, but the point was that we didn't want to illustrate eco eco crisis. 
we wanted uh, to maybe not not to make the themes of the biennial uh, on that, but rather right. to take on on a wider um, aspect, wider ethos that makes us understand uh, this ecological context. And that's the theme of, the, not, not the theme, we don't want to call it the theme, but, but the idea of uh, interdependence and interconnection. And the beautiful name to it, it's the same sea. You know, it actually reads, um, especially, you know, there's, there is a special sense for, for us in St. Petersburg, because we actually do share the same sea yes. with, with ah, Helsinki. Yes. And because we live by the sea, you know, when you, when you at the sea, when you look left, there is, you know, the huge St. Petersburg with all the huge buildings and all that. And when you look to the right, you know, we can see it, but we know that Helsinki is there. <laughs> so that, that's uh, that's been with us like um, like like for forever. I mean, with yeah. us in, uh, with those who live in Saint Petersburg. So, yeah. uh, if you could elaborate a bit more on this beautiful theme um, or the name for for the biennial, and a little bit more on the artistic content. Hmm. Yeah. Well, if I may continue, continue, Pirko, on the same on the idea of the same sea. It's of course a metaphor uh, that is about interconnectedness. It, it rem reminds us that despite our differences uh, and diversity, we are, we are all connected and dependent on, on each other, on our planet, on, on, on the climate, on the macro structures such, such as the seas, earth and atmosphere and bio biodiversity. Uh, so the sea is something that connects us, but also uh, also accepts our differences in a way. Hmm. And of course, we we are in a context of an island, so the sea is <laughs> surrounding us there very concretely as well. Yes. And this in uh, this Jakko Niemelä's installation, Key Six, you can actually uh, think about this work as a symbol of interconnectedness. It's um, constructed from uh, scaff scaffoldings and each part is necessary to keep it, to hold it. So everything is dependent on everything else in the structure. And uh, this installation greets visitors when they arrive to island from mainland Helsinki. And uh, this red, red key there is on um, up to six meters. And it refers to this alarming phenomenon as the melting of Greenland's northern ice sheet. If that glacier were to vanish completely, it should cause global sea level to rise about six meters. And uh, this is quite direct statement from the artist about our situation now. Right, that's, uh, that's indeed a beautiful metaphor, I guess, both the same sea and the work you've just presented, because they work not in just a, you know, too straightforward way, but really in a beautiful metaphorical way. And um, I have a question in regards to the artists, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning, the Helsinki Biennial presents 41 artists or artistic collectives. So how have you been you know, choosing them? What, what, what was the ratio of uh, representation? Uh, what I mean is uh, Finnish uh, artists from Nordic countries, um, international. Uh, so did you really try, you know, by choosing the artists and, and their works, did you really try to kind of shed light on, on, on the local or on the global, well, because the this theme is, is is completely global. Yes, I, maybe I can start, and Taro, you can continue about this our curation process. Um, in the beginning, we we decided that uh, we would like to include half of the artists who are working actually in Finland, and then invite uh, other half from other countries. But uh, after that, we didn't really thought about any kind of uh, national representations in, in this biennial. 
we made a uh, lots of research. I mean, we researched hundreds of artists' works, and um, we tried to. Then we selected artists who we knew that they could respond to this um, unique uh, environment of Vallisari. And um, so there is no that kind of distinction between so much about nationalities or local and global. And I think that every art is global nowadays anyway. Any, any, any Russian artists? Before Not I this go? time, unfortunately. <laughs> Not this time, unfortunately. Yes. Oh, hopefully next time. Yeah, that was, um, nationality was, not on our agenda at all, except for, like Pirko mentioned, that we wanted half of the artists approximately to be local. Um, but uh, so we, we started this process by uh, getting to know hundreds of artists and their work. And of course, there were artists we already knew and, and chose from the very beginning uh, because it was such a delicious, many, many were so delicious choices for this kind of environment. Um, but yes, so it, it kind of, we started building a puzzle. We had a couple of pieces already. And then we, um, when we wanted uh, maybe to enhance uh, some of the themes, we, we picked these kinds of artists and then slowly it, it became this, this selection, but it could have been, the choices could have been very different also. So it was really a difficult choice. Or what do you say, Pirko? <laughs> yes, it was, of course, very difficult. Always it is difficult. Yes. We have such a great artist uh, that we couldn't include it. But uh, we were looking for different uh, kind of artistic practices. We didn't want to include include too many similar kind of practice practices in this exhibition. Yes, and also I think, um, let me just share again. Mm -hmm. um, do you see, no, yeah, you see it? Yes. Um, we also had, when we took artists uh, to the island and discussed with them and they discussed with us and also with the island, then certain mm -hmm. themes emerged from that dialogue and of course we then maybe wanted to maybe to have certain kinds of themes to enhance <laughs> the, uh, how to say um, certain aspects so in the end um, out of that dialogue came maybe five or four different themes that arose from the island and its meanings. I'm, sorry, I'm, I'm doing it this yeah. a little bit too quickly while trying to... So you're, so so, so you're saying that yeah. the biennial was um, in a way co-created with the artist who you brought to the island. And so their work was kind of a site-specific response to, to mm. the uh, environment. Yes, it was co-created with the artist, but also with the island. Yes, <laughs> with the island, <laughs> yes. So all of all these aspects. And, exactly. Uh, yes, and as Taru mentioned about those teams that um, actually all, yes. all these teams that we, can, we would like to, uh, expressed here as well um, are all related to this con notion of interconnectedness and all these themes are related to the island as well. There are themes are like time and change and in the island you can see um, very concretely um, the traces of human, uh, human life there for example and you can see also the change of uh, time in, in geological way and in historical way. So time and change is obviously one of the themes um, dealt by the artist, as well as is borders and identities, because island has been in between 
in between different um, or under under different nations like uh, Russian, Swedish, and Finnish. Uh, so, and of course, the diverse nature of Ireland has inspired many artists to deal with this issue. And then we wanted to brought up the notion of empathy. What is empathy and how it is manifested in artist works in our biennial? We will have some examples here, I think so as well. Yes, uh, maybe we'll show some examples of these themes and- Please do. Maybe Pirko, if you want to say some a few words about Jussi Kivi, who is really oh, yeah. the I, uh, artist of the I, this oh. island. <laughs> yes. Jussi Kivi is actually um, knows very well this island. Uh, he has ex explored that all, already years ago and he Sorry. knows all its secret places. And he created an installation which uh, part of the installation consists of miniature landscape like this here. It's very, very difficult to photograph because it's viewed uh, in total darkness. Uh, but it's, this view is based on his memories when he first time visited uh, Vallisari around, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago already when it was uh, not accessible to everybody. And uh, also the theme Jussi Kivi already explored uh, is, is theme of time and change uh, is also present in Maria Kanervo's work, uh, who made her installation directly into one of these houses uh, or the main, main uh, uh, residential building that is now abandoned. And time is also one aspect, or, or maybe one of the main aspects of uh, Sari Palosari's work, where she juxtaposes geological time and human time, and shows how it has taken millions of years for stones and minerals to form, and it only takes an instant for humans to, to dig them uh, to and, and to exploit them. These are stones that uh, are slowly uh, and suddenly, but also slowly uh, being e exploded by this call, thing called slug dynamite. Right. And then um, also uh, Samir Bovnik, who explores infrastructures in his performance, different kind of cables and networks uh, that humans build, and uh, uh, then uh, also looks at how they they ch change the landscape forever and exploit how how human infrastructures exploit nature and also other humans and species. Or because this is a former military island, Barankajin um, uh, took on that theme. Uh, to show how, how the armies of the world prepare to, to uh, warfare on, on foreign grounds and uh, different vegetations, different climates. And he made a world map uh, about uh, ca the camouflage pattern of different armies. And also, also t um, talks about the Eco catastrophes caused by war and army armies. And maybe Pirko would like yeah, to mention. And, uh, when, when it comes to the uh, issue of borders and identities, uh, we invited uh, South Korean Hyun Kwon to present her uh, animation uh, titled um, or how many years it was? I can't. Four hundred eighty-nine. Yes, four hundred and eighty-nine <laughs> years, which means that uh, so much time is needed to clean uh, DMZ area from the mines. So DMZ area is uh, maybe you know this uh, demilitarized area or zone in between those two Koreas. And uh, Hyun's animation is based on a story by former former soldier who have been there on that area. 
and it's an it's kind of nature paradise, but it's also having this uh, this uh, treat of mines and. When it's put on the context of Vallisari, it's interesting to see Sorry. the similarities in between these two works. Then uh, borders are also connected to identities in many ways. Uh, Uva Idwadze and Marian Abdul Karim, uh, their work, They Walked on Water, is about identities and home and belonging to a place and moving and moving to another place and uh, forming a building a life to to somewhere else to, to a place where you were not born in. And uh, well, Temur Lehmusruusu, on the other hand, focuses on on the microorganisms that surround us, but that we cannot, with human senses, we cannot perceive so he makes them uh, he makes the the action of of these micro microorganisms he makes it visible or in this case he makes them uh, hearable <laughs> so this is uh, uh, his organ or of DK uh, an instrument that listens to vibrations that are happening in when when a tree trunk rots and then transform this this these vibrations into uh, gusts of air that make an organ sound so we can hear how the forest rots mm, beautiful um i just i would just like to mention that um from what we are now seeing on our screens the Valasari Island um, does seem like you know this truly fascinating space uh, because when you take some original works by international artists that were not created specifically for the Valasari Island but were kind of um, brought there uh, so the way they are receiving new ways of being of being interpreted and uh, new way new ways for the audience to have brand new perspectives this is uh this is a beautiful idea and the island is becoming like a true merging point between between the local and the global so i guess that's um that's a beautiful thing to do thank you anna that was very beautifully said and very very to the point exactly <laughs> Yeah. Um, i just um, I, I would just like to um turn our conversation a bit to um, to another angle, uh, and just just a reminder to the audience is that the um, Helsinki Biennial has already started. So uh, it started in July. Uh, am, am I right? Uh, in uh, end of July. June. Uh, in June. June. Sorry. 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 June. End of June. So it's been it's been there like for for two months already. So um, I have a question to Maya while we're still mm -hmm. looking at this at the, at the beautiful images of the artworks uh, well basically uh, as far as i can see it uh, one of the key aims of creating um, a biennial uh, an international biennial is probably to make your territory visible and mm -hmm. include local specific uh, in it so how do you work in reality so um over the past two two months um if you could elaborate on this a little bit well, actually, we've been really surprised at uh, how well things have gone. And now I'm knocking on my own wood just to, just in case, because we still have uh, until the end of September to go. But it's been great to see how how uh, the media, the international media, local media have been very receptive and positive. And even though we're living in the times of the pandemic, we had to postpone the biennial for one year, which was uh, a really tough thing to do. It's been a roller coaster producing this first edition in these times because we were really set to go uh, a, a year ago and and build the biennial, open it last summer, but but uh, because of the pandemic, we had to postpone. But uh, I think that maybe the 
digital uh, presence has been very important when you think of visibility. Uh, we've been very active on social media. Our website uh, has been very active. We're trying to convey as much as we can of the feelings and atmosphere and the works of the of the island. And uh, of course, in Finland, as probably in Russia as well, people are traveling within the country. So we've had a lot of of Finnish tourists, but now slowly we are opening up to um, to uh, international. Uh, curators and and uh, colleagues from all over the world, which is is great. Uh, but definitely, visibility is and has been a very important important aspect of the biennial. And of course, the biennial happens every other year, so this is just the first time, and will be continuing. Uh, sorry, that's the trick about biennials that they, you know, they happen mm -hmm. once once every two years. So um, uh, the trick is that uh, when biennials stop, you actually have to start working on a new one immediately. <laughs> that's, yeah. uh, that's the entire trick. And um, uh, so the pandemic notwithstanding, uh, could you tell us in a few words about what new dynamics has the first biennial brought to the city? Uh, well, it has. it has. I, I, I believe it has, and and uh, especially during this time of the pandemic, I think it's been an, a very important message to uh, the locals that uh, life goes on. That you know, welcome to the island, welcome to see art, which really our audiences have been yearning for. Uh, the museums have been closed. It's been difficult to to attend. Uh, attend concerts and, and um, uh, the theater, uh, the opera, but now now with the biennial happening outside, uh, we've also been able to um, make people realize the importance of art in public spaces. And, and because HAM, the Helsinki Art Museum, uh, is responsible for curating public art in Helsinki, uh, this has been a fantastic uh, opportunity to show people uh, as you can see, the image of Alicia Quade's bee, big beehive mm. is one of the um, pieces that will stay on in Helsinki uh, as a, a right, public right. artwork, as well as her Pars Pro Toto uh, piece. And these will be uh, situated in Kalasatama. And uh, Laura Könnenen's uh, No Heaven Up in the Sky will be will be placed in in Vallisari for people to enjoy for years to come. But I think that the the fact that we've been able to show these pieces uh, on the island, and as you mentioned, uh, this uh, opportunity to pe for people to see art in different contexts, these works will look very different and open up new points of view and interpretations when they're they're placed uh, on the mainland. But uh, the fact that they've gotten their first night on the island, I think, is important and and uh, really strengthens the ownership of the citizens of Helsinki uh, with with these pieces of public art. Helsinki uh, uh, abides by the uh, one percent for uh, art uh, principle, and that means that whenever there is a public building project, about one percent, normally a little. Uh, less than 1% of the building costs is used for art for that area, be it a park, a kindergarten, a school, or, you know, a neighborhood. So, so this has uh, also been a, a way of changing or developing the dynamics between the museum and our practices with the help of, of the biennial to uh, serve, serve the city in, uh, in a much more dynamic way. So, you know, in many ways, I, I think we've already been able to uh, have uh, have a, a role in in changing changing the city. And uh, of course, we, we aim to continue in the same same vein in the future with the other biannuals. Great. Yeah. And uh, sorry, no, I just... the Helsinki. Yeah. Sorry, Tara. Go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Just just to add a little bit uh, about Maybe Maya, you also me meant to mm. say, meant to tell something about uh, the cooperation between different, uh, uh, how to say, different uh, 
offices of the, of the city or different um, departments of, of departments the exactly yeah. and and all the citizens also because it's been a wonderful cooperation for example with these pieces by margaret and christine wertheim uh, who uh, that were crocheted by 3000 helsinki people and these crochet workshops were organized by the, in the city libraries, in the city schools, kindergartens, old people's uh, service homes. And so it was, was, was a big collective uh, endeavor <laughs> to make this, this work happen. And the, there has been a lot, lots of cooperation with the cultural sector, uh, many, many, school projects that we have built around this and also maybe uh, one of the most interesting cooperations we had maybe Birko would like to say a few words yeah, about this. We, we also collaborated with um, Open Prison um, nearby mm. island uh, um, is the Open Prison and we have an artist Pavel Althammer who is famous for collaborating with different kind of communities. So he invited uh, prisoners to create a film with, with him. And um, it's, it's so amazingly beautiful collaboration and beautiful film, two films that uh, he finally produced. Artists together with the prisoners are acting in those films. And he, found out that um, because we were thinking that Vallisari is not is uninhabited island that there's no communities human communities so Pavel came and said hi there is a community there are these prisoners who are working every day there because they are having they are doing this maintaining work on the island so we then contacted the prison and they were really really nice collaborators so one, one more example of this kind of collaboration is this. And thanks, Pitko and uh, Taro, for, the, for these examples. And, and uh, I'd like to add something that uh, is a, maybe a new viewpoint that opened uh, to us uh, in, in this biannual art, art world. And that was the collaboration we've had with, uh, with the sports department. Uh, actually, I, I don't know if uh, our listeners uh, really understand how many steps they walk when they look at art at different biannuals like the Venice Biannual. If you have a, a track counter with you, you, you you, you'll notice that it's been more uh, more a physical exercise than jogging or going to the gym. And, and this is, of course, from the viewpoint of the city, something important that the, uh, the city wants people to move and for them to invite everyone free admission. The biannual does not cost, does not have an entrance fee. Uh, to walk on the island and, uh, you know, look at art and, uh, and nature, that's a very big health uh, benefit as well. You know, you, the physical health benefit, but also uh, the mental health benefit, and especially after the pandemic or during the pandemic, because we've all been cooped up inside for so long and, and just, being out in, in, on the island has been a fantastic break for, for people. That's a fantastic perspective. I've, <laughs> I've, I, I've never thought of it this way, but that's something, you know, for, for, you know, for other biennial and other huge exhibition organizers to think about, you know, being, being, uh, being, uh, breathing in the fresh air and having in view the sea uh, is, is definitely something that kind of harmonizes your spirit and mm -hmm. mind. That's true, that's true. And I know that uh, the Helsinki Art Museum was kind of the main organizer of the, uh, of the event, but um, Maya, were there uh, like a real collaboration in between the uh, Helsinki, Helsinki uh, Art Museum or other cultural institutions, in addition to what has been mentioned, um, uh, mentioned previously? Have the museum and galleries been been actively involved, or is it really the production of the Helsinki Art Museum? Uh, well, the Helsinki Art Museum is the main producer of, of uh, the right. biannual and uh, the home of, home hub of the of the biannual. But of course, we've worked uh, with uh, the local uh, grassroots uh, organizations and bigger institutions, museums. 
We'd like to have done even more, and this is uh, our very uh, strong aim in the future, but the pandemic has made things harder when it has come to collaboration. Uh, and of course, we're missing all, all, all our visitors from abroad, which I think that also uh, the other institutions and and artist groups and, and venues were hoping to, to um, uh, see here in the city uh, and to welcome to their spaces. Uh, we held workshops, we had open calls for artists, we've had different kinds of collaboration, and uh, we've had a, 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 a part of the biannual which has been titled uh, Inspired by the Biannual, and this is something we hope to develop much more in the, in the biannuals to come. But collaboration is the key, I think, that, you know, for, for everything now Certainly. in this moment is, is collaboration. Anna, if I may add that sure. even today we have, there are like, I think maybe four different events and discussions happening at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> one in cooperation with the biennial, one is happening right now uh, with the University of Arts there at the research pavilion. And then there is um, a talk at uh, the Helsinki University science corner and uh, something else is also happening right now so, so the there public, are lots of these public program is very rich yes yes and also these uh, corporations with different institutions with different artist groups uh with different um uh, local uh, like uh, uh, in initiatives of schools uh, inhabitants uh, many many different mm -hmm. kinds of Interesting. People. So maybe maybe in two years we can think of doing collaboration with <laughs> with your neighbor. Um, you know, with, with many efforts in Petersburg. Um, and talking about future uh, future biennials. So what what are future plans? Uh, I I thinking of are you thinking yet of how uh, you're going to keep up the momentum in between the biennial editions? What has been planned yet? How are you, how are you envisaging, envisaging the, um, these two years and then the next edition? Uh, maybe, Maya, if you could start. Yeah, maybe I can start. Uh, Anna, when you mentioned this uh, proliferation of biannuals, are there too many biannuals? I'm actually very excited about this uh, this uh, format of the biannual because a biannual can uh, always uh, uh, reinvent itself. It's nimble. It's quick. Uh, it's I think been a, such a good. Uh, influence uh, on our work in the museum and integrating the biannual with our, our practices, our public art practices, exhibitions, collections, uh, is something that we'll be doing much more in the future. And also uh, in the in the year, uh, in between time, between the two biannuals, we are working towards the second biannual already, uh, getting very excited about that. And, uh, you know, um, the momentum that we hope to keep, keep up, uh, we, we will be uh, very active uh, on, on our website and, and in so, on social media. So, so please do follow us uh, and you'll hear our latest news there. That's good. <laughs> because it's been such an important um, tool uh to a channel to for us for us during this 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 past years mm. and if you could maybe uh taro pirko at um to the same question but from the curatorial perspective are you, are you going to stay as the curators of the second edition or will there be mm. <laughs> no <laughs> someone else right <laughs> And as, as in every, every biennial or triennial, curators will change always, and that's a good thing, you know. Yes. yes. Yeah. The yeah. biennial yeah. must, must renew itself yes. all yeah. the time. And that one bit going to need a rest because they've been working on <laughs> really hard. And it's, you know, it, it, physically, uh, what I've been admiring during this process so much, the, uh, how the artists have been incredible. They've, they've really weathered uh, extreme conditions. They've gone out on the island if, it, if it's been, been stormy and rainy. 
there's been snow, there, there's been <laughs> there's been a uh, heat wave, and the same goes for Taro and and uh, for curating this exhibition on the island is no no easy thing. <laughs> right. Um, so thank you very much. I guess we could um, give some time to to the question, and I can see several of them. Um, Okay, so that's um, so for the questions, there is the same one. Can you show your plans for the next biennial? And are you going to change the location in the future? That's actually an interesting one. So yeah. are you going uh, to well, the... we have 328 islands on the in the archipelago of, outside of Helsinki. So, you know, I think that for the next biennial, it will be wise for us to stay on Vallisari because we've gotten to know the island. Uh, we we know the surroundings. Uh, we're very very much wiser than we were a year ago. Uh, but in the future, there's no uh, keeping us from from changing venues. And uh, but I think that uh, staying in the archipelago, in addition to uh, developing the uh, mainland events, is something that uh, we'll do. There's there's such a, a variety of historical and uh, interesting islands and with fantastic natural environments. Right. Um, um, we have um, well, in, an opinion rather than a question, but also if you could comment on this from Anna. Uh, so Anna says, I have my own opinion that an island itself, as I saw and felt, became the main hero of the biennial, more strong and interesting object than, than art, which was represented there. Do the creators agree with this opinion or not really? But that was not a question from me, I from another like Anna. Oh, Anna. I would like to comment on that, that um, we, never right. wanted, we never wanted to fill the island with arts, you know? And we never wanted to fill it with objects of art. We wanted uh, the nature have a big role also for the visitors experience when they enter the island and see the biennial. But it's true that it's amazing place and your attention is certainly it goes to the nature as well. But I hope that it goes also to the artworks and the relation in between the art and nature and the environment and the history. And it brings also these global issues in your mind when you go around there. Exactly, like Pirko said, it's not a beauty contest between nature and art, <laughs> but a dialogue. And maybe also art can bring up some, some things that are not seen on the island, some underlying things, like Pirko said, and also the global perspective. But, uh, and, and, and just to add that the island truly has a will of its own. It's, it's been like, as Maya said, it's been raining, but it's been raining also inside the, the buildings. It's been so humid that it's really, there are tens of liters of water that we have to remove every day from the, these beautiful, inside these beautiful vaulted cellars. And the, the islands, island has played many, many tricks on us and, and the artworks. Mm. So it, it's... <laughs> It's the queen of the, this exhibition, absolutely. Maybe I can add by, by uh, with a, a very personal experience. I, I've noticed that whenever I go out to the island, I'm looking at the artwork, but the artwork forces me to look at nature um, <laughs> in a different right. way. Uh, I'm, a, I'm more of an art person than a nature person, to be quite honest with you. But, but uh, you know, it's, it's made me much more aware of, of details in nature. And I think that uh, this, this um, you know, dialogue, it, it's ve very true. And, and it's as if you could really hear voices when you, when you, a dialogue between art and nature as you walk along, along the island. Mm. And also so, and, interesting, and, yeah. maybe as an, as an art example of an ex is it already existing work that we brought, on, brought to the island uh, was uh, Janet Cardiff's and George Burress Miller's. Mm -hmm. Uh, forest for a thousand years, which almost every day mixes with reality because sounds from the from the neighboring uh, still active military island uh, 
come to the island and you can hear those live sounds mixed into the, the recorded sounds. And also I was there yesterday and there was very high wind and, and rain and the sound work, sitting in the sound work, you, were, you couldn't be sure if it was the wind, real wind or the recorded wind, or if it was the sound of a real tree falling down <laughs> or, or just a recording. Fascinating. Um, in regards to the sound, I've just had a question actually from, from one of um, my colleagues at Maniège. So um, Olga is asking about um, special, uh, if, I, if you were planning to add special music or maybe sound agenda uh, in the future, or maybe you have already worked on that, on this uh, particular edition. So music program, I don't know, sound performances. Do you have anything like this already uh, included in the first biennial? Yes, there are many uh, performances and works that are about sound and music and, and like uh, Niskanen and Salos work, uh, just the Cardiff and Miller, like I, like I just mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. Oti Pieski, Birit and Kati Harla's work, well, there is music in many, many works, actually. But don't forget part of the bird disco. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There is a bird disco. <laughs> bird disco. Yes. You can dance to the sounds of birds. Right. Um, but of course, about the future plans, uh, we that, that depends very much on, on, on the next curator and how things develop. Nothing is decided yet. And actually have a beautiful, beautiful soundtrack, uh, you know, that you're using in, uh, in all the trailers oh. and, you know, as, as, mm. is, was it Maya, was it something that was uh, created specifically for, for the biennial or? Created specifically for the biennial, yes. Yeah. And you can hear it on our website when you see the Yes, see yes. The video. I love hearing, listening to yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so we have one more question, which I don't quite understand because I haven't been to the, um, uh, to the biennial, but I'm going to read it and I'm sure that you will be able to comment. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So a question from um, Yekaterina Andreeva. So she's asking whose idea was it was to build the pavilion, the tickets office with a strong idea of community. Oh, that's a quick, um, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I, I actually forgot to mention when we were talking about the dynamics of the city. Right. This is an uh, initiative of the city planning department. And uh, b before the ferries left from um, a place where, a point uh, in the market, uh, uh, outside the market, uh, uh, the market, uh, the food market, yeah. uh, and it was very, very confusing and uh, very, very uh, tight space. But now, with because of the biannual, uh, attention was being paid to uh, the possibility of, of a much larger uh, amount of people using the ferries, and that's why why there was the initiative to build build the new piers and the and the pavilion where tickets are sold. And you can also use it as a viewing point to look out to the sea. So, so in that sense, yes, the biannual uh, has, has uh, uh, pro contributed to initiatives of, of building uh, new, new, new structures in, in the city, uh, permanent ones. Permanent ones. Mm -hmm. Right. Um... Yeah, I guess uh, it sums it up in terms of the question. Um, let me just um, quick, quickly sum up my, you know, my my perspective. I have not yet been to the to the biennial, but in the current pandemic situation that prevents us from from actually visiting Helsinki, it does sound everything you say and everything you show sound really utopic. So it is really like an island of utopia uh, realized mm -hmm. for this. Uh, for this edition of, of the biennial. Uh, it all really looks very fascinating and very interesting. And I can imagine that the Valasari Island actually functions as, you know, like 
um, I'm not a huge fan of this word, but um, nothing else comes to my mind right now, um, as, as, as a piece of this uh, real Gesamtkunstwerk uh, mm. of, you know, of a total installation where everything is so perfectly mixed up and merged so that it gives, uh, you know, all those very different uh, perspectives and that it has it is working with, uh, with with your various various senses, and I really like the idea about you know sports and how you actually walk or you jog or whatever. It's uh, it's it's something we have to think about, you know, uh, in our practice too. Um, so thank you very much. Um, first of all, thank you very much to our speakers uh, for having the time, for having found the time to join us. I understand well how busy you are with the biennial ongoing. So Maya, uh, uh, Pirko, Taro, thank you very, very much. Uh, and just a message to our audience. Thank you all very much too. And stay tuned to both Helsinki Biennial and Maniash's online announcements. And there is a lot going on both in Helsinki and in St. Petersburg both online and uh, and in person. And uh, we are going to stay tuned to Helsinki Biennial. We are, we are there. And as soon as the borders are open, we, we flick to, to Helsinki. I hope that the next that the next edition will be you know in a, in a different in different circumstances and, yeah. and also in a very different world. Mm. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Uh, this uh, has been a fantastic opportunity to talk about the biannual, and and uh, we really look forward to seeing you all in Helsinki soon. And and uh, whilst you're waiting and you have time to spend at home and read, don't forget to, uh, we have a, a very good book on the biannual, a catalog with introducing the artists and uh, and with uh, really interesting articles. So so maybe that will will give you a sense of what, what to look forward to in the next biannual as well. But thank you very much for, for this opportunity. Thank you. It's thank been you very much. a pleasure. Yes. Thank and you welcome. So Hope to see you here. Yes. <laughs> and, and thank you, Sunny, for organizing yes, Thank you event. so much. This was, it a, was lovely to see you. a pleasure to, to listen and learn more about the biannual and very, very good questions indeed. Thank you so much for organizing. Thank you this. all very much. It was lovely to see you all and um, and see you soon. Stay tuned. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.